Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my May reading vlog. So, full disclosure, this vlog is kinda gonna be all over the place and scattered because that's the sort of energy that May has had for me <laughs> up until this point. Let me kinda take you on a journey. So, it is May 18th and as of right now I've only completed two of the ten books that I had on my TBR for the month of May and the May the Force Read With You readathon. And that's because at the beginning of the month I started The Luminaries by Eleanor Caton. And that book is like 800-850 pages long and requires a lot of brain power. So even though I was reading it every day, like it took me what felt like an unreasonable amount of amount of time to complete it because I consider myself a fast reader. That was not a fast read. Like the mental capacity that I used, the only thing I can equate it to is the time I decided to read War and Peace when I was 15 years old, which was probably overly ambitious and very very precocious of me, but that's what that reading experience reminded me of. But it did take me a full two weeks to read that book. And I'm off to reading other things now, but I'm kind of in this place where it's like, I should probably be reading Voyager by Diana Gabaldon, but I also wanted to like give myself a break from a big book for like a second so that I could feel like I'm actually checking things off my list if I read like some shorter or faster reads in the meantime. So that's kind of where I am. I was just like, let me read some books that I feel like will be faster reads, will make me feel like I'm actually accomplishing something. So that's that's really the only strategy and plan I have for myself for this reading vlog is to try to get through some what I suspect will be faster reads and reads that hopefully are a little bit more like cotton candy fluffy reads because my brain definitely needs a moment of chill. I do have two books currently in the works right now so we're gonna talk about those a little bit. The first is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd, which was recommended to me by my friend Liz, who has been mentioned on this channel time and time again. We read a lot of very different things, I would say, but we're always recommending books to each other, and this one is one that I'm actually using for the May the Force Read With You readathon. It's like Victorian era historical fiction with some supernatural elements in it, as far as I can tell. Um, I'm not that far at this point. I'm like, I want to say 60 pages or so in. So far it's really delightful. The like, narrative voice, there's something about it that is just really charming and fun, which is basically exactly what I need after the luminaries. So from what I can tell at this point, this character Christabel has been kidnapped and she's kind of a weird supernatural type thing. She has these like special gifts or special characteristics that at this point I don't really know what they are and I don't think you are supposed to know what they are, but I'm kind of like WTF Christabel, like what's going on with you? But anyway, the main character Bridie is like this female detective and quite the character, like she smokes a pipe, she has this weird hat, um, and she's just a lot of fun and seems to be really like a magnet for misfits and that sort of thing. Like her maid or housekeeper or whatever you want to call her is a giantess is how she's described. She's like seven feet tall and Bridie like took her from some circus or freak show type thing. And then Bridie has somehow attracted this ghost <laughs> named Ruby and she's told him point blank that she's not interested in being haunted but Ruby just kind of lingers around. He's a, or was a boxer in his 
lifetime, I suppose. But yeah, so there's already this very interesting cast of characters, um, and I am very, very intrigued by it. It's not the usual type of book that I go for, but as of right now, I am having a blast with it. But yeah, then I'm also trying to read A Bend in the Star by Rachel Berenbaum, which I'm liking the book, but it's also taking me so long to get through for like reasons that don't involve the actual book itself. So I actually started this book, A Bend in the Stars, in April because it was a book that I wanted to, to read that month. Um, it is like set in Russia around the time of the First World War and there's this like female character that's one of the first like female surgeons and her brother is like this genius scientist racing against Einstein to figure out the theory of relativity. There's a lot going on there which is probably why I need to actually like focus a little bit more than I had anticipated but I am enjoying it. It's just a case of I was reading the luminaries at the same time and the luminaries literally sucked all of my ability for like reading comprehension dry. Like it was like vampiric in the way that it required my full on attention. So even though I was continuing to read and listen to A Bend in the Stars, I feel like I just wasn't like connecting in a way because it was just like my brain was over here in the luminaries land and I needed to be over here with A Bend in the Stars and we were just miles apart. So that proved to be a problem and so basically what's happened is that I keep starting and stopping and not making all that much progress. I'm about 30% in to Abandon the Stars right now as an audiobook, but to be honest, I think I'm going to start it over and see if I can like engage with it more fully um, to the point that I'm satisfied with the reading experience because I do think it's a book that I will enjoy. I think that I'll probably re-listen to this like 30% at a faster speed than I normally listen to audiobooks on. I'm usually at like 1.25 or something like that. Maybe I'll try to listen to it at like a 2 and see if that helps. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just listen to it at my usual speed um, and see what happens. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, so those are the two books that I'm currently reading right now. I don't know what else I'll pick up during this reading vlog. Part of me is like maybe I should read Flaneuz during the evening, but then also part of me is like no 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 Brittany focus on the two books at hand and get through them so you can actually check off things which is your intent and then worry about the other books, but we'll see. We'll, we'll figure it out. It'll just be a weird sort of journey. Like what you gonna do. But anyway, I think for now I'm gonna try to read a little bit more of Things in Jars before I have to start my work day. We'll see how far I get and I will check in with you guys at some point when I have news to share. Hello, how you doing? It is Wednesday evening and I'm doing a bit of multitasking while I'm filming this because tomorrow's video on World War II recommendations is exporting so I don't want to touch the computer and make it mad and I figured I should check in and let you know how the reading situation has been because since I last spoke to you I have managed to read more of Things in Jars and also more of A Bend in the Stars. So as far as Things in Jars goes, I'm really enjoying it. To me, I feel like this would be a nice book for anyone who really likes fantasy and would potentially want to read or be introduced to the historical fiction drama genre. I can't talk. Um, but yeah, I think it would be like a nice crossover book for anyone who is 
into fantasy but is interested in exploring the historical fiction genre because there are supernatural elements at play here but there's still a lot that is grounding it enough for me that I am able to enjoy it because as you know fantasy sci-fi anything kind of speculative can be rather hit or miss with me and is nine times out of ten a miss but that's not the case here it's actually quite fun I would say like Bridey is just a pleasure and the characters they're as I think I said in the first clip it they're just like a bunch of misfits and that's kind of what I like about it is that they're all a little bit eccentric in their own ways I mean hello we have a ghost a like ghostly pugilist as much as I'm enjoying it I don't know that I entirely understand what's going on at this point because there's still so much mystery around this character Christabel who is the like girl that has been abducted and my like Victorian English major brain was just like the name Christabel had to be chosen specifically because of that like poem I want to say it was before the Victorian era and I want to say it's by Coolidge or Coolridge but the poem's name is Christabel but in that poem it's not Christabel that's evil it's someone else but the name had to have been chosen for a reason it's like too coincidental so I'm I'm intrigued to see if my spidey senses are right on that but anywho like Christabel is still a mystery there's like all these like abilities or things that she's able to do or rumored to be able to do that I can't figure out exactly what she is and Bridie is still trying to track her down and we're also getting a bit more of Bridie's backstory which is really interesting because Bridie has kind of a a dark past to her which I'm I'm not mad about I'm I'm really looking forward to exploring her background one of the other mysteries in the book though is how the ghost Ruby how Ruby knows Bridie because he's insisting that he does but Bridie doesn't recall he keeps just telling her like you're the detective figure it out type of thing um, but I do have to say there is this like odd chemistry between them that makes me really sad because nothing can happen he's dead he's a ghost and she's alive so it's kind of sad and a very interesting like star-crossed lover type vibe I'm getting from them at this point yeah I like the two of them I like the banter between the two of them and I like that he's just kind of there helping her along and she also has these other characters who are also helping her along which is a lot of fun as I've said it's it's just a fun read it was like exactly the type of book I needed after the luminaries like I needed something that was just fun because I was a little bit worried about a reading slump not gonna lie I'm trying to think if there's anything else oh I guess the other thing is that there's a lot of like the grotesque in this which means that it's kind of borderline gothic borderline like horror but like Victorian horror so it's not necessarily gonna be a book for anyone that's kind of squeamish or easily freaked out from what I can tell thus far so just gonna put that out there now anywho that's where things stand with things in jars as for a bend in the stars I had mentioned to you guys that I was toying with the idea of restarting the audiobook because I was listening to it but I wasn't absorbing it I was about 30% in so I didn't feel like it would be that much of a loss to restart it so I actually did this morning begin from the very beginning and I'm about through I want to say 17% right now um, which is about 
a little more than half of what I'm re-listening to at this point. I'm not listening to it any faster than I normally do. I'm still at 1.25. Guys, I attempted to listen to it at two point speed and I don't know how anyone does it. Like, it blew my mind. It sounded like someone was talking gibberish. I'm pretty sure that's what I would sound like if I was on speed. It was the equivalent of Roadrunner, but with the mouth. Like, I... It, it, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, more power to you if you're able to listen to it at a faster speed than me, because yeah, that's not happening. Um, but I'm also just really glad that I actually decided to do this, because I knew I was enjoying it, but I didn't have a grasp on the subject matter, and there are huge swaths that I just listened to that I have zero recollection of. Like, zero. Didn't know it happened. Um, so that just goes to show, like, how disconnected that reading experience was at the beginning of the month with that book. And it wasn't the book's fault. It was my brain, thanks to the luminaries, literally, like, sucking me dry. But I'm really enjoying it. As I mentioned, it is World War I focused in Russia, and the two characters that are kind of the focus are siblings, Vanya and Miri. And what's really interesting is that you are getting a glimpse at the anti-Semitism that was rife in Imperial Russia at this time, and it reminds me so much of like Kristallnacht in Nazi Germany. And I don't know that I've read anything that's really spoken about it in detail, but it that's kind of where we are, and it's addressing a lot of the limitations that both Vanya and Miri, who are these brilliant young people, are facing. Um, because, like, in Vanya's case, he's a Jewish man, and so that sort of precludes his, um, achievements within the field of science and allows his, who he thought was his mentor, to kind of take advantage of him. And in Miri's case, she is a woman and she is in a field where women are few and far in between at this point and she's dealing with that. So it's interesting to see the two of them facing these different types of adversity in their career. And I mean, with Miri too, arguably, she's also dealing with the discrimination because she is Jewish, but it seems like the more prevalent thing for her is the fact that she is a woman. Vanya is a boy genius going up against Einstein, and the stuff on him is interesting. But I gotta say, some of it goes over my head. Like, I was never a physics person, and when they're talking about Vanya and, like, his equations and what he's trying to figure out and why he needs to go see this eclipse, like, it, it goes over my head. And it kind of loses me not as interested in it as I would like to be. But when you get to Miri and everything that she's going through with her medical career and her trying to save her boneheaded brother and her boyfriend um, from conscription and all of that stuff, it it's good. So I'm really, really glad that I decided to restart the audiobook because I feel like this could potentially be a four or five star read, but if I had just continued, I feel like I probably would have ranked it, rated it lower. Um, and that wouldn't have been fair because it was just my brain being stupid as it sometimes is. But yeah, that's really where things stand with my reading as of right now. So I'm about 17% done with A Bend in the Stars. I'm about, I want to say, nearly 200 pages into Things in Jars, and I expect that I should probably be able to finish Things in Jars in the next two days, so probably by the weekend. So then we'll pick up another book and all that jazz. You know how this works. 
but yeah the light is gonna fail me I should finish scheduling tomorrow's video which you will have seen by now and enjoy the rest of my evening I am seeing movies in my future but then I also started re-watching like Ghost Nation or something on Travel Channel and that might be a downward spiral for the evening. We'll see. But I will check in with you soon. Bye! Hello! It's me again, basically from the exact same spot as yesterday because I am sitting in basically the exact same spot as yesterday. And just to address the elephant in the room, in case it does show up on camera, yes, I do have a what looks like a fat lip. I actually took a sick day today because either I had a freak allergic reaction while I slept or something bit my lip while I slept. Either way, this side of my lip was super duper swollen. Um, looked like I'd lost a prize fight. I think it looks a little bit better now, but just in case. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there. I did manage to do some reading today while I was lazing around on my sick day trying to figure out what the heck was going on with my lip. Um, and so I did read more of Things in Jars and I'm at the point where I think I have like around 100 pages left. So I'm pretty confident that I should be able to finish it tomorrow morning, but I'm still very much enjoying it. I like don't want to compare it to Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, but my brain keeps going there and I think it's because there are like two major similarities with the books. The first is the setting, they're both Victorian England, and the other is that they deal with kind of the seedy underworld, the criminal element of London at the time, um, with these characters that are super dark and shady and have very questionable morals in a lot of cases. So they have that in common. But I would say that with Fingersmith, it's very much grounded in reality and there's like a seriousness to it and this like build of atmosphere that I always talk about when I talk about Sarah Waters and this book definitely feels different because the like sort of supernatural elements in Things in Jar are what make this world churn like the questions about what Christabel is and the things that are happening in London and all of that like the supernatural element is what makes this book I think um and I would also say that whereas Fingersmith feels very serious in tone like this book doesn't take itself seriously at all there's a lot of humor to it and sort of funny quips and banter and like these like asides or parentheticals that are just really amusing. So while one is very serious in tone, one is more whimsical and kind of free in that regard. And I really just love the cast of characters, but I also love the like supernatural stuff that's going on because a lot of it has to do with these like individuals who are in like the Victorian vernacular freaks or misfits, the like sideshow type characters, and I think there's something about that that just reminds me of some of the research I did for my senior thesis when I was talking about the different types of bodies and like the monstrousness of characters. Like there's a lot of that Victorian stuff going on here, which is kind of my bread and butter and probably a large part of why I'm enjoying it. But yeah, it's just been a, a fun ride. I mean, at this point we have a sneaking suspicion we know what exactly Christabel is. And yeah, so we have a suspicion about that. And we also are getting a lot more into Bridie's past, 
which I'm going to be interested in seeing how everything kind of comes together, but seeing some of Bridie's past and how her past seems to be coming back to bite her in the behind is a fun ride. So the book does have the present plotline which is like in the 1860s and then the story when Bridie is a young girl that's about 20 years prior. So those are the two kind of threads that you're following in um, learning about Bridie and Christabel and these different nefarious characters. I will say I really like Ruby the boxer ghost guy with his tattoos but right now he just feels like a puppy or a shadow that follows Bridie around and I would really like to see him do things or like be something um, because he's a fun character kind of reminds me of Casper if Casper was like a cut tattooed boxer and not that cute little like Pillsbury Doughboy type ghost there's something about him I really like so I would I'm hoping that he comes to Bridie's rescue at some point just putting it out there but yeah that, that's kind of where I stand with that right now. As I said, I do suspect that I will finish it tomorrow morning because I have a little under 100 pages left. Um, and if that's the case, then I'll pick up another book. I don't know what book. So if I finish tomorrow, I'll let you know. But I do also want to listen to more of A Bend in the Stars tomorrow during work if work permits. The fact that I was off today for a sick day means that tomorrow might be a little harassing, but we'll see. Anywho, I am gonna go, maybe read a little bit more, maybe scrounge around for food, maybe do something completely different. I don't know. My my mind is like a sieve right now. But yeah, that that's it for now. I will check in with you guys later. Hello! We're gonna take advantage of the fact that I have a little bit of makeup on and I'm set up for filming to talk about the end of Things in Jars. Wow, 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 wow. It has been a long time since I could safely say that I have a book hangover. I finished this book and was just like, no, it can't end. I want more. I want so much more of Bridie and Ruby and their world and I was just like is there a second book it like I have to have another book and so I was um I was texting Liz about it asking her if she doesn't know if there's a second book in this like series we don't know if it's a series or not but I am hungry for it and I just had such a fun time and to be honest for a good chunk of the book I was like this is like a a solid four star read because I was really enjoying it but then by the time I got to the end by the time we figure out what Christabel is by the time we figure out how Ruby and Bridie actually know each other by the time kind of all the pieces come together and the different like storylines and the backstory kind of mesh together. It was just so good and so much fun and it's a book that I can see myself wanting to reread just because I want to be transported to this world yet again. In other news, I did start Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge this morning. It was one of my most anticipated releases, I think of the spring, although I could be mixing up calendar months and it might have been a winter one, um, but it's one that I've been very excited about. It was also on my spring TBR, so I definitely want to read it. Um, I'm only, I want to say like 60 pages in so far, but it's not exactly what I expected and I am a little bit nervous going into it because I know that Katie started this and ended up DNFing it around a hundred pages in and so I'm trying to go in with an open mind but as of right now it is definitely not what I anticipated so it's a book that is set during 
the Reconstruction era, but in Brooklyn, and this young black woman and her mother don't see eye to eye. Liberty doesn't necessarily want to follow in her mother's footsteps and become a doctor and work at her side, and ends up, I think, moving to Haiti when she marries a Haitian. And so I was expecting Liberty to be pretty much a grown-up for the majority of this book. Like, coming-of-age story, like she's a teenager, early 20s type thing, makes a somewhat rebellious choice to run off and marry this Haitian and move to the Caribbean. Um, but up until this point, like 60 pages in, she's like an 11 or 12 year old child, but the book is roughly 300 pages, so the fact that like 60 pages in I'm still in her childhood, not exactly what I was anticipating. Um, the writing is good, like I will say that, I have no problems with the writing. Um, I just, right now, am not entirely invested in Liberty's story. But I will have to say, one of the things that I'm finding a little bit frustrating at this point is that I don't feel that the setting has really been like fully formed or that it's really grounded in anything, if that makes any sense. Like, it's a bit disorienting because at no point that I can recall at this point is Brooklyn referred to by name. They keep referring to King County, which is the county that Brooklyn is located in. But unless you knew that, unless you read the synopsis and like stored that Brooklyn tidbit in your mind, I don't know that you would make the correlation. And because you're talking like 1860s Brooklyn, like this feels very rural and that's not what people would expect of Brooklyn. And yes, this is historical fiction, so obviously they're going to build it around what Brooklyn would have been like in the 1860s or 1870s. And I don't know if it was called Brooklyn at that time, so maybe that is why they haven't referred to it by name, but it just doesn't feel fleshed out to me. Like, even as someone who lives in New York, it's, there's just something missing. But yeah, as of right now, it's just okay, kind of mediocre, like it's fine, I don't hate it. Um, but I am really hoping that, like, things start happening, that I start getting to the point of the story that I thought was the actual crux of the story, which was her moving to Haiti. So hopefully we'll get there soon. But yeah, that's all I have for you now. I'm gonna go because I have some videos to edit, I have some videos to schedule, and I will check in with you, I guess, tomorrow morning after I've read a little bit more of Liberty. Hello, checking in. Happy Monday. Gotta hand it to Monday. It has been the Mondayest Monday in a while, and that is saying something. I did want to check in because I got through a good chunk of Liberty this morning. It's okay. Like, that's how I feel about the book. It's just okay. I'm not really blown over by anything that I've read, and I have roughly a hundred pages left to go. Essentially, it took to getting around the 50% mark in the book for me to get to the point where I thought the book was originally starting off from. So for a lot of it, it's Liberty as a young child, and then she's off to school in, I want to say it's Ohio? but I might be wrong about that, um, before she actually, like, returns home to Brooklyn and meets her husband, who then is just like, we're gonna get married and we're going to move to Haiti. It took a very long time to get to the point where I thought the book would have actually started, and there is really 
a lot going on. Like, there is a lot. If you want a book that has a very complicated mother-daughter relationship, it's definitely in there. And there is interesting history kind of smattered throughout. Um, so they brought up this race riot that happened in New York in, I think, 1863, although they didn't call it a race riot, which I actually found interesting and sent me down a rabbit hole doing research into it. And apparently it's like a really big race riot and outbreak of violence that I don't know that anyone in my years of being in school ever actually brought up. And I am struggling to think of like a documentary or a movie or another book that did that. But I may be giving Liberty a little bit too much credit for that with this one because to be honest it was really more of a footnote in the case of the book than anything else. Um, but it had at least got me curious so I will give it that. Um, and then what else was there? What else? And sorry if you hear a bunch of background noise. I have no idea what my family is doing in the kitchen right now. Um, but so there was that. There's some really interesting like commentary on colorism because Liberty is a very dark skinned black woman but her mother can pass and there seems to be some hatred seems like a strong word but there's definitely some animosity or maybe shame associated with her mother being able to pass because of some of the behavior that her mother exhibits that Liberty isn't on board for, or not necessarily the behavior her mother exhibits, but maybe the behavior that her mother allows, so like the microaggressions and outright racism when white patients are dealing with Liberty and her mother not standing up for her. So there's definitely some, some stuff going on there. And also, her husband is white passing as well so there is that um, but yeah I just it's definitely not the book I expected it to be the writing is very nice um, but I think it's a bit slow and like we have a hundred pages left which is about a third of the book and we're only just getting to Haiti now I don't know how you can wrap up that in such a small amount of pages when you've literally taken 200 pages to get to the point where Liberty marries. So yeah, unclear, but they did actually start to say Brooklyn in the section that I just read, so that was a relief, but I just don't think that it would be a Brooklyn that anyone in like a modern context would recognize. Like I know that much of like the Bronx and Brooklyn and those areas that are now highly populated cities were once farmland, but not many people would have known that. And I just feel like there needed to be something to help ground it in the fact that it is Brooklyn still. Like I just, I don't feel like you got anything that would really help you cement the fact that it is Brooklyn because quite frankly it feels like it could be any kind of rural area even in the south with the exception of the fact that Liberty is freeborn and the fact that Liberty's mother Kathy um, Madame Elizabeth and some others seem to be involved with the Underground Railroad but again it's never stated outright which just everything seems vague like I think that's one of the problems I'm having everything just feels a little bit vague maybe that's it maybe I've figured it out in talking to you guys so I thank you for tuning into this TED talk <laughs> essentially I have 100 pages left feel like I'll probably finish that tomorrow morning so then I'll start on another book um, in other news I do think, unfortunately, I'm going to put a bend in the stars on a bit of a pause and pick it up at some point later from no fault of the book itself because 
from what I have read, I have enjoyed. But as I was telling Katie, I have literally been trying to listen to this audiobook for about a month at this point. And the furthest I've gotten is about 30%. And I've restarted it once already. And like, it's just been a really disjointed reading experience. I think because I was trying to listen to it at the same time that I was listening to the luminaries. My brain was just not processing and then my usual like audiobook listening time kind of got hijacked by work. Um, so I didn't have as much of that as I would have liked and so it's just a case of like I've gone every once in a while like a week 10 days without even touching the audiobook again. So I do think that what I'm going to do is stop trying to listen to the audiobook, return it to Libby, and then pick it up in another couple months and try to actually read the physical book and see if I fare better with that because I do think it has a potential to be a really great book. It's just life has interrupted this reading experience of that particular book, unfortunately, and I just don't see myself being able to give it a like fair review considering how disjointed this reading attempt has been. So I think I'm gonna do that but yeah that's that's where things stand for now. I am going to wrap up with work because I have a few emails that I still need to send um, and then hopefully I will do some editing of this vlog so that it can go up on Thursday is the plan and then also probably watch Mayor of East Town or Mayor from East Town whatever it is it's wonderful and I highly recommend it if you're into like crime shows it's kind of it's Kate Winslet and there's something of like a broad church vibe but in like an industrial American setting, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, that's just what I'm gonna go with. But anyway, I will hopefully watch yesterday's episode of that tonight while eating a Carvel ice cream sandwich. I'll talk to you later. Bye! Hello! <laughs> I feel like I'm looking a little bit rough and that's because I'm tired, like really tired. And it's only what? What is today? Is today Tuesday or is today Wednesday? It's Tuesday. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how out of it I am today. But I did want to check in because I finished Liberty this morning as I had predicted. Um, yeah, I still stand by my I'm not blown away by this assessment. Um, I feel like it's probably a 3, maybe if I'm being generous, a 3.5 star read for me. Um, I do s admittedly think that the end of the book was a little bit more interesting and the last hundred or so pages is Liberty in Haiti with her husband Emmanuel and her in-laws and adjusting to the way of life there um, and so the scenery like the setting of it was just a little bit more engaging to me but I still feel like everything was a little bit vague and I mean maybe it's vagueness in favor of artistry um, because I do think there was some really lovely writing within the book itself, but as far as like the overall story, it took too long to get started. I don't know that I necessarily felt connected or that I really was invested in any of the characters, including Liberty, and I will say that I have a thing where I don't like when books introduce characters in the latter half of a book, especially something this short. Like this is 300 pages long and you introduced 
an entirely new cast of characters in the last 100 pages. It just makes it really hard to connect with those characters, to build any sort of sympathy or rapport, so to speak, with them. And I think it also, just for the writer, makes it really hard to tie up loose ends. Like I said, it was okay, um, but considering that it was one of my like most anticipated releases for 2021, it's kind of a bummer that I didn't like it more than I did, um, because I do think it had a lot of potential. It just wasn't my cup of tea. So yeah, anywho, um, I do think I'm gonna leave this vlog off here because it's Tuesday and this is supposed to go up Thursday so I have some editing to do um, but I do think the next book that I'm gonna start reading is Flanus so I will start this in the morning I suspect and then I will hopefully finish it in the next few days it's under 300 pages so hopefully I can finish it maybe by Saturday Regardless, I'm pretty confident that you will see it in my May wrap-up with the other books that I read this month. Shocker. Innovative, I know. But anyway, thanks so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you did, and I will see you next time. Bye!